This is my friend, Kevin, a current big tech software engineer with a very inspiring story. See, Kevin was never a coding prodigy when he decided that he first wanted to learn how to code. So I started failing all my classes. Kevin faced many challenges that would have made most individuals completely give up on becoming a software engineer. So I got laid off from my very first full-time software engineering job. But through determination and persistence, he was able to turn his setbacks into stepping stones to ultimately land his dream job at Google. To learn more about his story, we rented an Airbnb in Austin, Texas, where Kevin took me through a day in his life, sharing the highs, the lows, and everything in between of his journey into the world of software engineering. Happy Monday, Kevy. Happy Monday, Kevin. Time to hit the road and get working. Yes, yes it is. We're gonna do some software engineering. We're gonna do some work. We're gonna drink some coffee. I think you were born to be an influencer though. Why? Just spread positivity. <laughs> Do you actually believe that? Yeah. Ooh, Kay was listening to Lil Baby. Is that what software engineers listen to? I listen to mostly all rap kind of stuff. Or most of the time I'll just put on rap. Like very aggressive, angry what? rap. <laughs> what? That's, I mean, I don't know. That's, you like what you like, right? While you're working, while you're writing code, it's just yeah, like... Yeah, I literally, I literally will. Yeah, I'll like be listening to like Kodak Black. Lil it gets Dirt, you in the like, zone. Yeah, I don't know why. To push the prod? <laughs> to break prod. I'm saying that they came from the bottom. I don't really care they think about me. I don't go fuck with that whole set. I just know the little bitch when I come back around me. Yeah. Oh, he did some man. I said that. New vet, I did that. New stick, I copped that. That show, bitch, I popped that. Young All right, Kevin. So, why did you want to become a software engineer? So, it's kind of funny, but going back in high school, I never really thought about college. And I guess that's kind of bad, but it worked out being fine. But I never really thought about what I'd want to major in if I went to college. And so eventually I went to college, I went to New York University, and I had to you know, figure out like what I wanted to actually study or focus on. And the only thing I knew at that point, probably like a lot of other people, was that I liked video games. And so I figured, okay, how do I make video games? I make video games with code. And so I enrolled in a Python class that fall, my freshman uh, fall, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna learn how to make games because that's what coding can do. And that was the only reason why I started studying something that would lead to me becoming a software engineer. I feel like that's so many people's story is because yeah. they got into coding because they like video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's a very, um, I don't know, unoriginal path almost in that way. But I mean, I think a lot of good things come from that. When you just follow things you like or are passionate about or you're yeah. interested in, we, you know, Kenny and I have talked about this, where it's just like a thing that very, f ends up following a very natural progression. For sure. And so for for me, that's definitely what it was. I liked video games. I was super into video games. I figured I'd want to do something with them, and I knew that you could make video games with code. So was big tech always the goal? Because you're a big tech software engineer right now. Or when you first started college, it wasn't even about the job. You just were interested in coding, and that's right. what you wanted to do. Yeah, I think it's, it's actually this, this changed for me very sharply, I guess. I remember in 2015, you know, I was going to school at NYU, so I'm living in the city. And I remember someone connected me to this guy named Chris. And Chris worked at Google. And shout out Chris if you're seeing this somehow. But I've messaged Chris since then, and Chris had a really big impact on me. And I think it goes to show you that you don't really know the impact you could have on someone or the small things that you could do that can make a big difference in someone's life. But I remember in 2015, Chris was, an, uh, I think he was a PM at Google at that time. And so he invited me to go and see the Google office and like go get shown around the, the Chelsea office and walk around with him and grab lunch. And that was a pretty pivotal moment, I think, for me. It made me realize that this is like a career I could follow or this is a place I could really want to work at. And I remember he showed me, or he told me one specific thing too that was really interesting. He told me that, you know, I thanked him for like helping me and doing me yeah. a favor and he said, you know, just do it for someone else. And that really stood out to me. So I remember from there, I tried to start studying from interviews and try and start understanding like, how do you get into big tech and what's the interview process like? And you know, how can I give myself the best shot? And from there, I really, I think, set my sights on trying to work at a place like that at some point in my career. So you enrolled into computer science, you had your sights on big tech, and then what, you were a coding prodigy and you aced all your classes and you got a big tech internship right away? No, actually, that's not how it went. Wait, so what happened? So, I started failing all my classes. You were failing all your 
coding classes, computer science classes? At first it was fine. Like the intro classes were pretty fine and I wasn't doing amazingly, I wasn't doing horribly. Coding was never a thing that came easily to me. And I did, three, I did the intro classes and I did something horrible, which is that I started taking breaks from coding. So I did my intro classes and then I stopped. I, I didn't know really if I was gonna do something like econ and computer science or just computer science. So originally I thought I was gonna do like a double major. Mm -hmm. So I did my intro classes for computer science and then I switched over to start doing some econ classes. I guess kind of the idea was to see what I liked and then stick with that. Or if I was gonna do both, you know, I basically like would do a little bit of each as I went on. But that was a terrible idea because if anyone knows anything about coding, everything kind of like math builds on each other. And so by the time I started doing more classes for computer science, it was my sophomore fall is when I started doing like object oriented programming stuff. It was no longer procedural programming and I wasn't just learning about Python. Like now I was learning about Java and objects and inheritance and all this good stuff. But because of that, I didn't really remember much of anything from my intro classes. And I started doing like the harder classes like uh, data structures, discrete math. I was doing horribly because I didn't remember like many of the basic building blocks of programming that obviously it was important that I remembered because they're pre prerequisites for those classes. So it sounds like those first two classes, you know, they weren't the hardest, uh, but they weren't the easiest. You know, you did relatively good, right. but you kind of took breaks. And then when you came back and started doing the harder classes, that's when you really started to struggle. Oh yeah, I, were, I struggled horribly. So there was a point in your college career where you just vividly remember thinking, I can't do this. Fully, yeah. And you... I, yeah, I remember. I remember like, I, I remember where I was. I remember what was happening. Uh, and I remember thinking truly like, I can't keep doing this. I'm gonna fail. And you were just running through the scenarios in your head like, if it's not computer science, what am I gonna do? That's literally what I did. I sat outside a lecture hall in Courant, which is like NYU's math and computer science building. And I... I sat outside of my lecture hall. And at this point, to, to give you some context, I had gotten my midterm grades in data structures and uh, discrete math, and they were both Fs. And I'm not saying like, oh, like, ha, oh, I was failing. I literally had Fs. And so at the middle of each of those semesters, I was failing, like actually on paper failing those classes. And so I pretty quickly came to the realization, like, I don't know if I could do this. I remember sitting outside my lecture hall yeah. in the CS building and I went through every single major on New York University's website and just scanned it one by one. And after looking through the entire list and realizing that I was not interested in literally a single other major, I figured I just had to keep figuring out how to not fail computer not science. Not a single one. Literally not, not a single one. I probably, I don't even know how many majors they have. They probably have over a hundred, I'm assuming. I wasn't interested in the single one. And I was like, I have to keep doing computer science and I somehow have to not fail. How did you feel after you kind of realized, okay, there's literally nothing else I want to do? Yeah, I, I really just thought to myself, if this is the only thing I want to do, yeah. or I'm remotely interested in doing, how do I not fail? How do I like basically get this piece of paper on, out on the other side of this computer science degree yeah. uh, and get through the rest of college? And I had to try a lot harder. And it wasn't that I wasn't trying hard, but I had to try and start being like smarter about how I studied. I started going to the library a ton, like even before this I was. Um, but like, for example, for the discrete math class, I remember vividly that, you know, that's a very hard class, I think objectively. And especially it was very hard for me too. But I remember the teacher said, it was an 8 a.m. lecture. And so he said, if you show up to every single class, I won't fail you. And so I knew wow. that as long as I showed up to this 8 a.m. class, I was gonna get at least to see. And you know, I tried really hard. I went to office hours, I like read the textbook, I did the homeworks, I studied with people. I, just, I like couldn't do it. I, I didn't know how to do Chinese remainder theorem. I didn't know how to do all the combinatorics and Eulerian paths and like all this other stuff that you learn. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew like, okay, if I just show up to every 8 a.m. class and I pay attention and I do my best, I'll be okay. When you saw these grades and you were failing, was that like motivation? Did that kind of like get it? Did that put a chip on your shoulder to like work harder in a way? I think maybe, I think maybe in retrospect it did. In the moment, it just felt really bad. Yeah. In the, in the moment, you know, I felt horrible. I yeah. felt like I couldn't do the things that my classmates could do. I feel like I wasn't smart. I felt like I was failing, like literally and metaphorically I yeah. was failing. Yeah. I felt like I made all the wrong decisions and 
I think what it taught me now is that especially for anyone learning these kinds of you know, complicated things. Yeah. I think you really have to have a very good understanding of the basics. Yeah. And so I always talk about how it's like math. Like if you don't understand the underlying principles and fundamentals, you're gonna have a lot of problems building on top of that. And so I always, just, I always compare it to like a house. Like if your house has a faulty foundation, it's gonna crumble. It's not gonna be safe. You're not gonna be comfortable in it. And that's a similar thing I think with computer science. Like I did not understand enough of the basics and fundamentals to then start building on top of it. So when I did have to start learning things like data structures or CSO, like computer systems organization, it was really hard for me because I was I was going from like zero to 10, not nine to 10. Yeah. And I needed to spend the time like really building up that foundation. I want to back up for a minute. You said that um, once you kind of determined that, all right, there really, even though I'm failing, there really is no other major for me. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. That's when you really started to put in the work. You kind of, you took it up a notch. You put in the extra effort. You went to the after hours with your teachers. You know, you studied a little bit longer. Uh, you showed up to every single class. You said that the teacher said, as long as you show up, I'll give you a C. Right. And I think like that is such a an, like special thing because it sort of shows you like half the battle is literally just suiting up, showing up and doing the work. And if you have that mentality, I feel like you can get really far in anything in life. Yeah, I totally agree. I think half the battle is like literally just showing up and doing the thing. Yeah. And I think that's especially true in computer science. It's especially true in like my career. I think I've gotten, you know, any success I've had, I think it's largely just because I've like been able to zoom out and think on a large enough timeline mm -hmm. where I might be upset with where I am today or the position I'm in or what I know versus what I don't know. But I know as long as I keep continually showing up every day, putting in a little bit of work and like moving the needle, no matter how small, as long as I just keep pushing the boulder up the mountain, yeah. so to speak, one step at a time, it starts becoming easier and easier. But the second you sort of like let up or slow down, it becomes heavier and harder. Yeah. And then you're, you know, eventually before you know it, you're going backwards and yeah. So you just have to show up and put in effort a little bit every day. I think what you're describing is momentum. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Having momentum in life is just so important. We, we've kind of been talking about it with YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, as YouTubers, once you kind of uh, build a consistent uploading schedule, it's like really easy to film and post your next video right. versus, you know, if we take a month or two months off, yeah, it's like, I've, like I've done many times, Same. <laughs> it's so hard to get back in the swing of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once you start consistently doing it, just like it gets easier and easier. You get more comfortable, you get more used to doing the thing, Yeah. you know? Like if, if anyone committed to doing something for an entire year, let's just say, like yeah. do a little bit of something, whether it's five minutes or an hour, mm -hmm. every single day, I think by the end of the year, you'd inevitably be in a better place than you were a year ago. Yeah. You would have made some significant amount of progress. And I think you're better equipped to like continue doing that work. Like you now understand and can see how much progress you've made and now you're more encouraged to like do that again. You understand that doing that is actually worth it. And until you actually try that, like commit yourself to doing something that's hard and do a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll actually believe it. Like you have to see it for yourself. For sure. You wanna get a bite to eat? Let's do it. Let's do it. So when did you actually get your first job? My first job ever, like related to coding? Yeah. Yeah, my first job ever actually came actually from that same principle of like just showing up and putting in effort. So I took a web design class my sophomore year and my teacher, it was again, it was an 8 a.m. class. I don't know what it is with these 8 a.m. classes, but it was an 8 a.m. class and the teacher ran like a web design agency. And he told me, he said, you know, a lot of times I give, you know, like students opportunities to work with me if anyone's interested in that. And so I remember I worked with him like the whole semester or I, I went to class the whole semester. He like got to know me, whatever. And then the semester after that, I was basically able to like get an internship with him where I was just able to basically build out like different wireframes and uh, like build them out with HTML and CSS. And it was kind of just good practice for me. And it was something that I was able to then put on my resume. That was like the first thing related to coding that I had as a job. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you get paid for that? I didn't get paid. So it was totally unpaid. I took the train, I took the subway from Manhattan twice a week to Brooklyn. And uh, I would just go to his basically like, um, you know, they rented some kind of office space and uh, I would just go out in Brooklyn and, and work there for like a handful of hours each day. So how long were you at this, I guess, internship or? I did it for one semester basically. So I did it for like, I guess, three or four months. Um, and yeah, let me put some bullet points on my resume and get something to talk about. So I think it was worth it. That's the perfect amount of time for something that's no pay, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So how long from that job 
to finding your first real job? So my first, I guess, real like full-time job you're talking about yeah. was probably, I guess, like two years later from that sort of internship experience that I had. And I found that job from like a job posting where I just uploaded my resume and this, this site basically like sent out your resume on your behalf or worked with different companies and was sort of like a middle person to help connect you with different companies. And so this company was like a startup in Soho in Manhattan. So it was perfect. It was right where I was. And it sounded really cool. It was a company that basically connected influencers with brands. Wait, so your first job was working like in the influencer space kind of? Yeah, which is kind of crazy <laughs> like looking back and thinking about, but yeah, it was. So it was kind of cool to like be in that field before we were like even in that field. I guess it was kind of like foreshadowing, which is that's, kind of funny. Yeah, that's so random. So this was a smaller company? Yeah, it was like 30-ish people probably total when I joined. And then, uh, you know, I could count the engineers on one hand probably when I had first joined, which is crazy. Like there was probably five, maybe, maybe seven engineers. So the first job wasn't like a big tech internship, you no. know, it wasn't like an internship at, Not at, all. at Facebook or anything. No. Yeah. So your first job, it was a smaller startup mm -hmm. working in the content creation space. Right. Which is funny to think. Yeah. How long were you there for? I was there for actually eight months and then I actually got laid off, which is a crazy thing that happened to me. You got laid off from your first job. Yeah. So I got laid off from my very first full-time software engineering job. Wow. And I always joked with like Carly, my girlfriend, that um, it, it was two days before my birthday. And so startups and, you know, this company in particular, like wanted to uh, buy people like whatever they wanted, essentially like a cake or pastries or ice cream on their birthday. And so I always joked that it was like they laid me off because they didn't want to buy me a, a cake or something. They wanted to save on their cost, so they laid me off right before <laughs> my birthday. That's funny, man. Wow. Yeah. So you were failing computer science classes. Right. You got your act together. Mm -hmm. You graduated. And then your first real job, you got laid off. Yep. You had a rough start. I guess. I mean, I try not to think of it like that. I think um, in a lot of ways, being laid off was really good for me. I felt like being laid off showed me. It was a forcing function. It was a forcing function for me to move on to a role that I wasn't particularly loving. I didn't love the environment I was in. I felt like I wasn't learning that much. I felt the things that, that I was learning was because I was smashing my head against the wall. I was learning things because I was trying really hard to absorb information, but I didn't, I didn't have nearly as much guidance or mentorship that I personally wanted. Other people might not care about that, but that was something that I really wanted in my first role and even my first few roles. Like I really wanted to learn. I wanted to be a sponge. I wanted to like get information from people who I felt like knew what they were talking mm. about. And that was not how I felt at this company. I felt like there was not enough guidance for me. There was not enough structure for what I wanted. And so getting laid off was really like a, a forcing mechanism to give me the sort of springboard to actually go out and look for those different opportunities. Okay, I pull up high spot. Kevin, yo, have an idea. All right. Let's take this table. Okay. And let's move it into the living room. Uh huh. So we can watch TV while we work. All right, let's do it. You ever practice your dad? <laughs> I ever practice never do. You gotta do get you, the clap. You, you do. What is? What do you think is like the de facto dap? Like you meet someone for the first. Like the other night, we were with a bunch of new people. It, it depends on the year. What year is it? Right now. 2024. This is the one. That's the one. It's so. Is it not? It, I don't know. I that think, is I think, the I think one. Some people give less like grip. Yeah. Like some people like give more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, like, that's a, some, some people come in and they're like this. No, you gotta wrap the thumb. No, but not everyone wraps the thumb. Like you gotta, you gotta see, do it like you gotta that. See what angle they're coming in. At. You know? If they're coming in like this, yeah, and then it's like a quick. No, I'm making it awkward. No, dude. If, like if you're like leaving really fast and you're like reaching for it, you're like, yo, I'll see you later. You know, it's like a. Yeah, quick. I mean that's fine. Like if like, you're, yo, Kenny, what's going on? And then you like come in and. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Nick called me. So, should we tell him to pick us up or no? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah, we're down to come with you. Are you cool to drive us? And then if like we want to yeah. leave earlier, we'll, we'll Uber? Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it's smart because like with parking, you probably have to pay for parking and everything. Like if you drive yourself, it almost costs the same as an Uber at that point, you know? Right. Yeah. So you might as well take one car. So man, you got laid off from your first coding job. What happened after that? So after that, I got one month severance luckily. So I kind of used the first like 30 days to just collect my thoughts and sort of decide what I wanted to do next. I felt really bad too, because I like 
definitely felt like I had a ton of imposter syndrome before. I got laid off and then I got laid off and I felt even worse. Yeah. So I took the 30 days to kind of relax and reset and think about what I wanted. And then after that, I applied to like infinite jobs and I got rejected by a ton of them. And eventually I got another job at a startup. And that was like the immediate thing that I did after getting laid off from that first job. Okay, how long did it take you to find that second job? I think I, st so I got laid off at the end of March, basically, I think it was March 20th of 2018. Okay. And then I started working at the next company I think right after 4th of July, so like July 5th, 2018. That's a pretty long time without a job. Yeah. Were you stressed out during that time period? It's funny because on paper, I should have been stressed. Like yeah. I remember seeing my bank account go lower and lower, like to the point where I was like, oh wow, like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to actually pay my rent by the end of this lease. Yeah. And uh, ironically, it was like the most comfortable and calm I felt. Like it, you know, top five times in my life where I felt the least stressed, which really? is really weird. Yeah, like the first, certain period of time I felt a little weird not having a job and I felt stressed and all my friends would go to work during the day and my roommates and then I kind of settled into like a routine of being able to do what I want when I wanted and not having like the obligations that you normally have working and so it felt really nice. So yeah. what was the second job? What was that like? That was a good that was a good better job. I felt like luckily everything in my career has really gone like up and to the right luckily mm -hmm. um, so that was like the the motto that my roommates and I had at that time, like up and to the right, everything's up and to the right. And so it worked out really well. And I went to a different startup that actually also happened to be in Soho. And it was a great experience. It was really great. I love the people. It was still a small company. I was working with like maybe 10 engineers at that point. So it was getting a little bit bigger. And I was able to start finding like more of those things that I really wanted, like mentorship and guidance and um, doing things because of specific reasons, as opposed to just like a shouting match of someone tells me to do it, or this is the fastest way to do it. So I started learning a lot more uh, and slowly but surely, like I kept trying to make my way to bigger companies to try and seek more and more of like formal mentorship and more guardrails and like rules and heuristics for like why you do certain things and how you develop software that scales, et cetera. Yeah. So after that job, was it, what was after that? Amazon? So after that, I went to one other startup, Okay. but it was more of like a mid-sized, like large startup because it had about 300 engineers. Okay. Wow. So it was, a, it was a bigger company for sure. And the engineering department was way larger. And again, that was kind of what I was going for, like coming from like a five person engineering team, going to a 300 person engineering team and eventually even larger than that. So how how long did it take you to go from your very first programming job to landing the job at Amazon? So I guess it would have been like thinking full time. I graduated in March or sorry, May of 2017 and I started working at Amazon. I think it was in, I want to say it was November of 2020. Got it. So I guess it was a little over three years. Yeah to yeah, work at a place like that. Yeah, that kind of goes to show that it's okay, you know, to start at a smaller company and slowly work your way up. I definitely think it is. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, I only know one person who actually like interviewed at a really large company the first time and got in. Yeah, I feel like that's the story you hear all the time. Online. Right, but it's, I don't really think it's the reality. Yeah. You know, and so I think it, it is, it is the common story that people work at certain places, they build themselves up, yeah. they get experience, and then they get an opportunity that they might really be looking for, yeah. so to speak. Last question, what advice would you give to those who are trying to go down a similar path to break into big tech or just break into the software engineering industry in general? I would probably just say to keep chipping away at stuff because I remember feeling at different points in my career, whether it was like, struggling in college and thinking I was gonna have to switch majors or whether it was getting laid off from my first job, it felt like everything in that moment. Mm. It felt like my whole world was crumbling or my whole plan was falling apart. And the reality of it is that if I just zoomed out, I would have felt way better. And I think that's in many ways why I am where I am. And it's not me trying to say that I have any sort of success necessarily, but I think the only reason I am where I am is because I just didn't give up and I kept trying. Yeah. And so I think if people feel discouraged in a specific moment, it's really helpful to just zoom out and think that the only way you really fail is if you just stop trying. Because otherwise, that was all that ever actually worked for me, is I just stuck with it. I didn't give up on computer science. I kept taking my classes. I went to office hours. I got laid off from my job. I applied to more. I worked at certain companies and got to bigger ones. It was always like a thing of just, if I have enough time, I, I can succeed and I can do this thing. But if you like really zero in and focus on like the local minima, like this very specific point in your career or timeline, it's not it's not everything. And so you can't really get fixated on that. You have to zoom out and just keep going. Yeah, man. That's really wholesome. That's great advice. Well, thank you for coming on my show.
course. Thank you so much for having me. Great dap. Great dap game. Great dap. Great dap.